Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Prudhomme. Thanks for the great introduction, Dr. Dr. Chow. Um, so as you said, I will be presenting about pearls and pitfalls of high precision and high quality echographic assessment. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So for the objective of, of this presentation, uh, they, they will be to review the main physics and pathophysiologic concepts that may contribute to the imprecision in measurements during the cardiac echocardiography. Um, to, li to list and seek actively common sources of error when assessing specific pathologies, uh, to discuss actions to take when confronted to possible sources of imprecision while taking into account the physical principles and pathophysiologic concepts learned under bullet one. Uh, and uh, we will review also various pragmatic strategies for quality control and continuous improvement in the echocardiography lab. I just want to put a disclaimer. This isn't, this isn't a review about uh, every measurement possible because that would be too um, uh, cumbersome to present in uh, uh, about an hour presentation. Uh, but uh, I will try to uh, give out examples at the end of the presentation to um, put some concepts behind uh, what, what I explained to you in the first part. Um, so for the plan of the presentation, I will uh, start uh, to, uh, to talk to you about general concepts and importance of imprecision and error. So why, in, a, in, a, in a summary, why is it important to uh, account for error and imprecision? Uh, we will then uh, discuss about uh, physical uh, physics uh, principle of um, that may account for our artifacts and imprecision. Uh, we will use specific examples that we encounter frequent, frequently in the Echo Lab uh, to um, illustrate uh, uh, the principles uh, men I mentioned before, uh, such as mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis. Uh, we will then discuss about uh, applying the pretest probability and the Bayes th theorem uh, in the, the Echo Lab, and we will uh, conclude afterwards. So about the general concepts and the importance of imprecision and error. So um, I, 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 while I was preparing this presentation, I thought, how, how could I keep it simple? And uh, how, how could I summarize uh, the, um, uh, the, the ways that one can um, make errors and imprecision in the Ecolab? Well, it, I, I, I think it boils, boils down to four concepts. Uh, you may overestimate the measurement underestimate the measurement. Uh, there can be also over or under diagnosis of a pathologic condition. Uh, and there can be failure of oneself or a working group to reproduce similar repeated me measurements in the same patient or similar settings. Uh, so the, the, these are rule of thumbs. They are not absolute. But uh, while I was uh, thinking about the presentation, I, I thought we could summarize uh, imprecision and error in the Ecolab that way. So it, it all boils down to those four factors to my point of, from my point of view. Um, when I thought about potential uh, source of errors, and uh, when I read about the source of errors and imprecision in the Ecolab, uh, there are many factors that uh, one must account for. Um, we can summarize them by uh, by five um, topics. Um, there are topics related to the physician or the profession, pro professional that is performing uh, cardiac sonography. Um, experience plays an important role into interpreting and measuring um, the uh, echographic images. Um, there can be feedback to training physicians uh, and uh, ongoing feedback uh, with even uh, well uh, uh, implanted into practice phys physician uh, to help improve uh, the uh, precision and uh, uh, de 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 decrease the risk of error while during doing the measurements. Uh, the clinical experience, as I said, um, there are techniques uh, used in acquiring the measures uh, that may vary, uh, vary uh, according to uh, how, how the, the person has been trained. And there are also physio phy physiological constraints such as the concentration, uh, focus, uh, eyesight. Uh, so there are all limitation, uh, uh, physio physiological limitations related to the physician uh, or professional. Um, there can be inherent uh, imprecision of the measurement instrument, so those can be mo modifiable. So the, the setting on the probe, uh, uh, the use of the probe, uh, and such, and th and others can be non-modifiable, -mod such as uh, uh, technology limitation or uh, 
physics limit physics limitation so um we we must think about those two because the modifiable we can uh, modify those factors by uh, um as uh, by assessing the situation and correcting the uh the parameters for example of the eco echocardiography machine um and the non -modifi modifiable factors are also important because we must account for them and while reporting the results of the uh echocardiography that we uh, perform. Uh, there can be physiological parameters such as loading conditions, for example, when assessing uh, the diastolic uh, uh, function and valvular function. Uh, there can be the heart rate that is uh, most important uh, in mitral stenosis, but can uh, be also important in many other uh, cardiac pathology. Uh, the blood pressure is important, uh, especially when assessing aortic stenosis, for example, and arrhythmia may, uh, may um, uh, induce uh, many uh, errors in measurements, such as uh, beat-to-beat variation in uh, PTI measurements, for example, in the outflow tracks, uh, and uh, also can affect the, the feasibility of diastolic uh, uh, dysfunction assessment. Um, there can uh, the comorbid disease of the of, of the patient or uh, the characteristic of the patient may uh, induce a source of error of imprecision such as body habitus, past radiotherapy, COPD, anemia, and prosthetic valve. And there can be also mathematical or anim anatomical assumption or simplification that are not always exact uh, that we must know and account for in order to give the the, the, more, the most precise assessment possible. So about accuracy and precision, some general uh, concepts, uh, just so uh, when we refer to it in the presentation, we, uh, we, can, we can be on the same page. Uh, so accuracy, uh, you can see an example uh, in the left, uh, the, the bottom left uh, image, a uh, bullseye. Uh, so the accuracy is to, uh, to aim towards a certain point, uh, but not necessarily to be every time on that point to be, you can be all around that point, but you can be focused in a certain area. Uh, on the right upper uh, image, you can see that you may have high precision, such as repeating the same measurement over and over again, but you can all, you, you can be um, out of the bullseye. So that means that uh, you are able to repeat the same measurement. You have uh, inter-exam uh, inter reproducibility. Uh, and uh, you may have uh, inter-observer reproducibility, but you don't, uh, you're, you're not uh, quite uh, uh, accurate uh, in your measurement. And uh, optimally, we want to be in the bottom right uh, bullseye. So we want to be as, ac I, um, as accurate and precise as pos possible. About sensitivity, specificity, specificity and uh, predictive, uh, uh, positive predictive value and negative uh, pr uh, predictive value. So um, the uh, uh, the sensitivity accounts for the the true po uh, positive the true positive of the test when the disease is present, uh, and the specific specificity accounts for the true negative. Uh, the positive uh, predictive values are in the uh, positive uh, echo test, and when the uh, the positive uh, when the disease is is present also, uh, and the negative uh, predictive value is the contrary. So when assessing error and imprecision, um, well, you must account for the, that most of the measurement necessitate a gold standard in, in order to provide valid, validity or be associated with a diagnostic or prognostic outcome. You cannot just have a measurement to measure things. You want to uh, either correlate with uh, uh, an anatomical uh, certainty or correlate with an exam that has been proven uh, to be associated with diagnostic or prognostic outcome, or you want to the exam to be directly correlated with diagnostic and prognostic outcome. For example, you can compare to many gold standards outcome or other comparators. Uh, the, the echo uh, cardiography can be a gold standard in itself in many pathology, uh, but for certain measurement, we need to have a cor correlation between, between what has already been established before the advent of echography. Um, so, for example, when me measuring the uh, uh, valvular gra gradient, the gold standard has been before cardiac catheterization because it was there before and it was an accurate measurement. Uh, um, when uh, assessing a source of error and a precision, you can correlate also with established measure of other uh, uh, diagnostic investigation 
infections such as uh, cardiac MRI. Um, and another example would be um, amyloidosis, where you can correlate the findings of, let's say, uh, global longitudinal strain assessment and cardiac biopsy to uh, prove the validity of the, uh, the measurement and uh, the, the test. Um, you can have a registry of normal values to compare uh, with the bell curves and you, you compare the uh, distribution, the statistical distribution of the values over a standard curve to see which, uh, which um, measurements uh, uh, level are standard or not. Uh, there may be correlation with uh, cadaveric studies. Uh, also, you can correlate with uh, specific, out specific outcomes such as hospitalization, Debt and ACS for uh, just for examples, and there there can be many more uh, of those examples. But uh, for the sake of time, I won't get into uh, too much detail. Um, why measurement uh, precision is important, and why assessment uh, of sources of error is important. When well, with the echocardiography, uh, it it may lead many measures have specific cutoffs that may lead to uh, invasive or uh, um, cardiologic interventions uh, or to important cardiologic intervention. Um, and it can have also a, um, perma uh, an economic factor. So for example, many uh, valvular replacement uh, uh, surgery or intervention uh, are based on specific cutoffs um, measured by uh, echocardiography. Uh, so if you want to be precise, let's say you, uh, you you underestimate the severity of a stenosis, uh, for example, the aortic stenosis, well, you might preclude the patient from getting uh, um, life-modifying intervention. And at the contrary, if you overcall a stenosis, well, uh, for example, the, again, the aortic stenosis, you may, um, you may put the patient in a situ situation where uh, he, uh, he is exposed to unnecessary risk because his prognosis wouldn't be as worse as we uh, as we anticipated. Uh, other example would be uh, aortic aneurysm repair uh, with a specific cutoff of the um, uh, aortic measurement. And for example, implantable cardiac defibrillator and resynchronization therapy. Um, there, can be, uh, there can also be um, uh, an importance of res um, response to therapy assessment. For example, when we want to know, uh, let's say, if a patient has uh, fared well under Entresto or under uh, resynchronization therapy, well, you need to have uh, precise uh, inter-observer um, um, validity because you want to know if the patient has really improved his ejection fraction and that is not an error of measurement. So you want, as a follow-up studies, uh, to be as precise and uh, to, to commit less error as possible. Uh, and you can, uh, put in an in economic situation where uh, uh, the patient can, uh, can have reimbursement of uh, some therapies, uh, well, the patient may be eligible to some expensive therapies uh, that may be uh, reimbursed by his uh, insurance company uh, if he uh, if he meets certain cutoffs. So for some of uh, for those reasons, it is important to have uh, precise me measurements in the eco lab. So uh, without any uh, further ado, I will uh, talk to you about uh, the physics, uh, uh, the artifacts that may be encountered uh, with the. Uh, the physical, uh, the physics pr principle explained, and uh, what imprecision uh, that may cause. So uh, we must go. We must start by going back to the basic of what are what are ultrasound waves. Well, ultrasound waves are mechanical vibration that induce alternate refraction and compression of any physical me medium. Uh, through which they pass. So uh, there are many parameters that I will explain to you be because uh, their comprehension is uh, uh, essential to um, to the rest of this talk. So you may have, yeah, there, there is the frequency, which are the cycles per second, uh, the number uh, of cycles that occur over one second, the velocity of the propagation, so the sound wave, how fast uh, does it go over um, over, uh, over time and over, over space, the, the wavelength, uh, which you can see with the lambda uh, letter here um, uh, right on top of the uh, image, uh, and the amplitude, the decibel, uh, that may be important for attenuation uh, principles. So um, 
when assessing poss poss possible sources of imprecision and uh, potential artifacts. Um, you, there's many physical principles that uh, uh, that affect the interaction between ultrasound and tissues. Uh, there may be reflection, uh, refraction, attenuation, re uh, re uh, resolution, and scattering. We won't go into too much detail into scattering, uh, but it will be used for certain explanation. But it, it, from my point of view and uh, from the reference I've read, uh, it is less important uh, in that matter. So for the first principle is the, the reflection. So it is uh, paramount to, uh, to perform, uh, it's a paramount physics principle to perform a echography uh, because uh, the ultrasound wave need, need to be reflected uh, towards the transducer that has produced them in order to detect images. Uh, and uh, what makes the ultrasound bounce back towards the transducer is uh, interface uh, change. So, um, the, the boundaries of our tissue have different uh, uh, different densities, uh, so uh, the ultrasound waves uh, rebound under um, rebound over uh, the uh, interface between those tissues. Uh, so that's an important principle, and that's uh, one of the most important principles in echography. Uh, and the amount of reflection depends on the uh, acoustic impedance between uh, the tissue and the interf interface, as I discussed, and the angle of uh, reflection. The most uh, uh, ultrasound wave will, uh, that will be reflected are the, the ones that would be perpendicular to the uh, interface uh, study. So the main uh, the main points uh, that are important for uh, to, for error imprecision error assessment and artifact with reflection the main implication is, is that uh, the two uh, the, there will uh, be two D dropout that will occur if the ultrasound beam uh, is too far from the structure the from the study structure uh, and uh, especially if it's not perpendicular to a structure. A strong specular reflector may cause acoustic shadowing due to the reflection of most of the ultrasound wave. Uh, that comes into account when the, the patient has a mechanical valve or important calcifications. Uh, and a parallel strong uh, specular reflector, reflector may cause a reverberation artifact. We will get into reverberation artifact uh, relatively soon. So what is 2D echo dropout? Uh, well, an example could be the assessment of the interatrial septum and potential ASD. So uh, the interatrial septum is parallel and far from the ultrasound beam, beam uh, in the four chambers view. Uh, and it is relatively parallel to the ultrasound beam. Uh, so it cannot reflect properly the ultrasound wave when um, resulting in an echo dropout and potentially in a miss uh, over diagn diagnosis of uh, an, a potential ASD. So uh, when confronted to drop out, uh, one should angu uh, angulate the, the probe to intercept the structure uh, perpendicularly. Uh, it uh, should be attempted. Um, as uh, another artifact that may uh, be uh, in uh, that may be caused by reflection is uh, the reverberation artifact. So part of the ultrasound wave may be reflected back and forth between two strong specular reflector and exit at parallel points, causing reverberation. So as you can see in the image on your left, uh, the red, the red the ultrasound wave uh, penetrates uh, between two parallel strong reflector and they get reflected back and forth and they may exit the structure uh, at different points. So uh, they can be um, duplicate images at point A and point B shown on, uh, on the image. Uh, so it depends on the uh, reflection to uh, in order to uh, to occur. So uh, how can the reverberation artifact may uh, be uh, uh, accountable for uh, error in the echo lab? Uh, well, you can see here that there is a, a, a mass artifact or thrombus artifact in the left atrium on the long axis view. Uh, so one could uh, uh, mistake this artifact for a potential thrombus. Um, so in the, 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 le the image on the left, uh, uh, you can see that the uh, artifact at the bottom, which is marked by the small arrow, is caused by um, specular uh, reflection between uh, the aortic uh, annulus uh, 
upper side and lower side. Uh, so the, mo the most likely cause of the artifact in, the, in that case would be reflection back and forth uh, in the LVOT track uh, and the uh, appearance of uh, um, another um, uh, artifact in the uh, left atrium, which is not at the uh, positions that, it, it, that it's supposed to. So if we go back, you can say that uh, the, two, the two black line would be the uh, LVOT track in this example. And you can see a duplicate uh, artifact of uh, uh, one, one cusp of the aortic valve caused by the same phenomenon uh, here. So uh, one can mistake this for, uh, for example, for flaps in the, uh, uh, in the uh, our aorta. Another example here, which is uh, more a bit more difficult to differentiate uh, for a flap uh, in the uh, ascending aorta. So that is most likely caused by a reflection of the uh, uh, two parallel walls of the uh, ascending aorta. Uh, so you may see the reverberation act artifact may be uh, mistaken for a uh, dissection flap. Uh, so another uh, physics, uh, physics principle uh, of uh, echocardiography is image resolution. There are three types of image resolution, which are axial, lateral, and elevational. Uh, the axial, axial resolution is more precise than other types of resolution. So uh, what it means in, uh, in clinical practice is that uh, the, the most precise measurements are better acquired at the perpendicular angle uh, from the probe. Uh, in axial, the, the resolution is independent of depth. So if you take measure, measurements uh, deeper uh, on the ultrasound uh, beam, uh, it doesn't affect uh, the, pre, the, ax, uh, the axial resolution and the preciseness of me measurement. Uh, it depends on the frequency. Uh, lower frequency have deeper, uh, uh, penetrate deeper in the, uh, in the body but may have less uh, axial resolution. Uh, and uh, the uh, resolution is approximately twice uh, the wavelength. Uh, so because, uh, because of what we discussed uh, on this slide, yeah, every uh, echocardiographic echo image is like a slice. So it's a tomographic image. Uh, so the, uh, the ultrasound beam doesn't differentiate between uh, things that are uh, within a point of the, ax of the axial or spatial resolution at some point and may confound and may, um, uh, and there, there may, may be some images that aren't directly uh, in, the, um, in the physical plane that may be uh, introduced into uh, the viewing plane while doing the echo echography. So that may cause beam width artifacts. So some structures may appear uh, because the 3D volume, volume of the ultrasound beam are displayed on the, the same tomographic plane. Uh, so slices uh, are less narrow when the, um, when the images are far uh, from the tra transducer probe. So it occurs uh, at a greater frequency when you get far further away from the probe. Uh, and you can have compounded images uh, uh, on the same imaging plane. So in that example on the left image, there was a appearing mass on the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the aortic cusp, uh, but it wasn't uh, real because when uh, there, are, there were some other, um, uh, other views that were acquired, this image uh, wasn't uh, reproducible. So uh, one must account for the potential beam width artifact. And you may suspect it if you see, uh, uh, for example, in that, in that case, if you saw a calcification uh, near the outflow track, for example, you may suspect that artifact. Uh, so refraction is another uh, important physics principle in uh, 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 assessing for potential sources of error. Uh, the deflection of ultrasound wave from a straight path due to the difference in acoustic impedance may be a definition. Um, so it may result into double image artifacts. So as you see on the image on the left, uh, uh, when the uh, ultrasound wave uh, arrives at the uh, interface between tissues. Because of the changing densities, it is a, a physical property, uh, a physical um, uh, characteristic uh, that uh, the waves may be refracted. So the angle may change and result, uh, clinically result into uh, double image artifacts. So as you can see here, that may account for, 
for different um, different uh, types of error. Uh, on the left, you, you may see a double image artifact affecting the uh, aortic valve on a short axis view. Uh, one may uh, mistake this uh, for a, a quadricuspid uh, uh, aortic valve, uh, when in fact it is a, a normal tricuspid aortic valve. Uh, and on the right, you can see um, uh, regurgitant jets uh, that are duplicated. Uh, you can see that because uh, the jets are exactly the same color and configuration, and that is caused by a double image artifact. So uh, one could mistake uh, uh, a single jet uh, into being a double jet uh, of regurgitation. So attenuation is a very important uh, physics factor uh, in performing echography. Um, what, what, what is, uh, why is it important? It's because, uh, um, I'm sorry, there's a sound on the background. I'm not sure, do, do you still hear me? Now we can still hear you well. Okay, sorry, I thought, I thought this was my connection that uh, was dropping, but uh, sorry about that. So the attenuation is, is important in the echo lab uh, because uh, we want to have a crisp image and uh, the, the uh, physics principle of attenuation is that uh, um, the, uh, the intensity uh, decreases uh, uh, in a different uh, uh, medium over, over certain distances. Uh, so the ultrasound wave uh, can travel um, in a greater efficiency with certain medium, for example, uh, echocardiographic gel, uh, soft tissue, the tissues, uh, but uh, does not uh, propagate well into air or bone, for example. So that depends on uh, intrinsic um, uh, properties of tissues. Um, so the main clinical implication is that in order to have uh, um, crisp images, uh, you have to take account into physical um, uh, f physics uh, properties of the intensity. So the intensity is governed by uh, the formula that you can see over here. So I2 is the point where you want uh, the intensity uh, where you want the ultrasound, uh, the ultrasound wave to be. Uh, and I1 is the uh, intensity over at the trans transducer probe. And the, the, um, the factor that is right next to uh, the intensity of the ultrasound wave uh, near the ultrasound probe uh, explain why the intensity of the uh, ultrasound wave drops over a certain distance. So you can see that it's exponential and that alpha is the attenuation coefficient, which is uh, specific to certain tissues. And L is the length, uh, so the distance between points uh, of the transducer and the, uh, int uh, the interest point. Um, so for example, the uh, alpha of air is a thousand times that of uh, alpha of soft tissue tissues, so um, it may have cl uh, clinical implications for a uh, patient that have air between the assessment, uh, be between the transdu transducer and the structure that is assessed. Uh, so for example, patients uh, uh, with the COPD or patch surgery uh, may be particularly prone to attenuation artifact because uh, there is uh, more air in between the uh, probe and the uh, structures of interest. Um, that uh, the attenuation also explain why transduce, transducer gel is uh, necessary to decrease the air attenuation between the probe and the skin. Um, and uh, it also tells us that uh, with uh, increase of length uh, of depth, uh, well, the attenuation incre uh, well increases exponentially. Uh, so it's uh, it's very important uh, factor to uh, the precise the precision of the echography. Uh, from that formula, you can uh, you, you you can use that formula to the, uh, to uh, to uh, illustrate the principle that uh, lower frequencies uh, penetrate deeper into tissues, uh, and higher intensity may, means greater tissue penetration. So uh, it uh, may be a factor that can be adjusted to uh, help. Uh, decrease the attenuation. Uh, for the Doppler uh, acquisition, it's an important uh, part of the uh, echography assessment. Uh, so the Doppler principle is that uh, uh, when moving, tar when targets are moving through a medium, 
uh, that medium will um, uh, will be uh, di displaced in intensity for uh, from sound waves or ultrasound waves, uh, such as uh, the um, measured velocity uh, uh, will be uh, in, in, um, the frequency of backscatter ultrasound from the red blood cell moving towards the transducer will be higher uh, than that of the frequency of red blood cells moving away. Think, for example, of an ambulance. If you see an ambulance coming towards your way, uh, the, the sound will be uh, higher and uh, more high pitch. And when it's leaving, uh, leaving you, it's, uh, it's slower and less high pitch. Uh, so that's the principle that, uh, that may account from some imprecision, as I will show. Uh, and the uh, measurements uh, of the uh, velocity using the Doppler equation follows the uh, uh, the equation that is on the in the blue box on the lower image uh, that is a complicated equation for, but what you must uh, know from this equation is that uh, it is proportional to the to one uh, over uh, uh, cos cosinus function of theta theta is the angle be between blood flow uh, and the doppler uh, the doppler probe uh, um, orientation so um, what it means in clinical practice is that the intercept angle must be as parallel as possible uh, in order to have uh, the, the, the more precise assessment of the uh, velocity using the Doppler, uh, the Doppler function of the probe. Uh, so a deviation of 20 degrees and 60 degrees from the uh, parallel intercept angle will decrease the measured velocity of 6% and 50% respectively. Notice how it is uh, how it is relatively exponential. So uh, small uh, error of, of measurements do not um, are not in, do not impact the measurement that much, but it becomes a greater slope uh, uh, with the increasing degrees. Uh, it is especially important important in the evaluation of high velocity jets such as, such as aortic stenosis. It may be uh, one cause of underestimation, and it can be optimized using, for example, alternate view uh, in order to uh, acquire the uh, uh, Doppler signal. So, for example, for aortic stenosis, you may go to the right peristernal view or alternative views. And for uh, example, uh, certain modalities of assessment such as TEE uh, may provide more parallel angle for quantification of certain pathologies, uh, for example, uh, very eccentric mitral regurgitation. So for the signal aliasing and the Nyquist limit, uh, so you must know that uh, there is a function with the Doppler assessment that is uh, that is a pulse function. So uh, in uh, simple terms, the uh, the transducer emits uh, many uh, pulses uh, of ultrasound, which are compared into uh, from uh, each one each one another, uh, and it uh, it gives a relative. Uh, uh, speed over a specific point. Uh, so you assess the, the, the speed over specific points. And uh, the problem with uh, that, fun that, um, that function is that with uh, increasing uh, velocity, there is a, there is a cap uh, where the, uh, the flow becomes reversed because it is a, a reflection of the cos cosinus function that we've explained in the, in, in the last slide. So, um, if uh, you see uh, the, the points on, on the top of the, uh, uh, the middle screen, um, you can see that uh, if uh, the uh, frequency is low enough, then the point, the, the assessing points are all at the same place. So that, uh, that gives a precise assessment in the two first uh, um, sound, uh, it's, uh, ultrasound waves. And in the two bottom, it, it starts to become aliased. So um, it, it becomes that there, there is aliasing. So uh, the, the points do not uh, do not match over time. So it, it may be become reversed with the uh, the the, um, the slope of the uh, the ultrasound waves. So that uh, the clinical implication with that point is that uh, sometimes direction of the flow may be uh, mistaken, and there is uh, also a limit into the velocity uh, that one can um, assess using uh, a pulse width, a pulse width uh, ultrasound function. So uh, without further ado, I will discuss about specific examples to, uh, to illustrate what, what we've discussed and other uh, principles that I haven't discussed yet. 
for example, mitral regurgitation. So uh, there are many methods to assess uh, mitral regurgitation. We will be discussing about quantitative methods um, first. So for the PISA method, you can see that uh, it is related to the regurgitant flow in the formula you can see in the lower um, lower left box. Uh, so the uh, PISA radius uh, is uh, a conversion flow uh, in the regurgitant jet on the other opposite side of the regurgitant jet. So the radius is uh, is squared in that formula. So any error in measurements uh, of the ra radius uh, may account for an exponential source of error. So it is a very important uh, metric to assess. Uh, and that uh, assessment um, is based on uh, assumptions that the uh, PISA uh, is an hemispheric form uh, of conversions, which, which is not always the case. It becomes relatively uh, elliptical in functional regurgitation, so it might uh, uh, underestimate the uh, severity of uh, uh, regurgitation in that setting. Um, there, uh, are, there can also be uh, sources of error while measuring the uh, CW Doppler, so the continuous width Doppler. Uh, so if you don't have a, um, a good intercepting angle with the uh, mitral regurgitant jet, as we discussed in the Doppler uh, physics principle, well, you can underestimate uh, the, uh, the Doppler uh, that you can see uh, at the right lower um, image, and you can, uh, in the formula, uh, underestimate uh, the VTI, uh, such as in the uh, the uh, bottom formula in the lower left box. So um, you may underestimate the severity of the regurgitation, for example, for eccentric jet, because uh, of the theta angle that increases uh, in the uh, the Doppler uh, uh, for in the Doppler form formula. Um, so uh, what it means in, uh, in uh, other terms is that with the formula used, uh, since the, it is uh, relatively exponential with the PISA radius, uh, PISA radius in that formula has more um, important implication for smaller errors than the VTI, but uh, the acqu acquisition of the VTI must be also in a parallel uh, angle of intercept in order to be uh, uh, more precise. Uh, another method would be uh, the um, continuity method of calculating stroke volume uh, at the mitral annulus and at the LV outflow. So that's another me method uh, where we uh, subtract uh, the, uh, the mitral, uh, the mitral uh, stroke volume from the LV OT stroke uh, volume. Uh, that formula is uh, especially uh, important to understand uh, because uh, there is some compounding error that may occur. So you have to have a precise assessment of uh, the um, mitral uh, diameter annulus and the LVOT annulus because in the formula you can see at the bottom of the screen uh, the diameter is squared. So uh, every small error accounts to a, a greater error than, uh, for example, the measurement of uh, uh, VTI LVOT, for example, or VTI uh, of the mitral valve. So uh, the assessment of uh, those diameters account for greater error than the VTI it itself. Uh, another error is uh, also, uh, as in the case of the PISA method, an unparalleled intercept uh, of the Doppler PW also uh, impacts the uh, measurement, but to a lesser degree. Um, and there are also some other pitfalls because uh, some factors affect the velocity uh, of the uh, mitral uh, uh, the mitral VTI, uh, for example, uh, MAC, uh, or for example, LV uh, re relaxation and filling pressures. So that may affect uh, the uh, the assessment of the mitral uh, uh, the mitral stroke volume. Uh, there can be other sources of error when evaluating mitral regurgitation. For example, an eccentric jet may um, uh, induce a systolic flow reversal in only in a pulmonary vein, even if the regurgitation is less than severe because of the uh, ang angle of the uh, mitral regurgitation. Um, and also, uh, if there are many jets, uh, many of, of the uh, aforementioned uh, assumptions become invalid. Uh, it is also the case in the vena contracta, so the measurement of the, uh, the vena contracta may be not 
is not reliable when there are multiple jets uh, and the zone of convergence may not be always visible. Now let's uh, take the example of the uh, aortic stenosis uh, for errors in, in measurements. Uh, so the uh, estimation of the uh, aortic valve area uh, takes into account uh, measurements uh, such as the uh, diameter of the outflow tract uh, and the VTI of the um, uh, LVOT uh, and the VTI uh, of uh, the, the, aortic, uh, the, aort the aortic valve. Uh, so there are potential sources of error uh, when assessing those parameters. Uh, so the uh, error on the LVOT measurement will have also an exponential effect on the, uh, valve, the aortic valve area measurements. Uh, the VTI measurements may not be uh, may be underestimated when non-parallel intercept occurs. Uh, misalignment of the CW beam may uh, intercept also other. Uh, Doppler signals that may be close, such as mitral regurgitation. Uh, and um, for high velocity jets, uh, such as aortic stenosis, sometimes they can be uh, um, also uh, um, other sources of, uh, of obstruction that may be uh, present in the CW jets, uh, such as um, intracavitary obstruction also, that one must recognize in order not to uh, com com confound it with um, uh, a valve uh, obstruction. So you can see the uh, recognition of shapes of the Doppler signal is uh, really important into, uh, into knowing that you have assessed the right um, uh, the right Doppler jet. Uh, so for example, the, you can see sh the shape on the left of the aortic stenosis jet. Uh, it, it is relatively uh, relatively round at the at the tip. For, and for example, uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy has more of a dagger shape, uh, as we call it, uh, um, sh uh, shape. Um, and for the uh, mitral regurgitation, it has more of a, a round appearance and uh, it is more spread uh, over time than the uh, aortic stenosis, that it has different shapes. Uh, so one must be uh, acquainted with those uh, possible source of, uh, sources of error. Um, for the morphology of the aortic valve, we also discussed uh, as example of physics principle, uh, the, uh, the uh, double image artifact. So uh, one can correct this by reorienting re the probe. Uh, using alternative views such as subcostal views, or to search uh, for doming, for example, if you uh, if you try to search for a bicuspid valve into the uh, it would be the long axis view uh, uh, there, uh, and uh, especially when the valve is uh, heavily calcified, uh, that may be a, a factor that precludes from the assessment of the uh, uh, aortic valve morphology. Um, so there are situations when, must, when one must suspect an, uh, an error, uh, but not necessarily, which uh, would be uh, uh, the uh, situation where the valvular aortic area is less than one centimeter square and the gradients are less than 40 millimeters of mercury. Um, so there is a possibility of uh, a low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis with either uh, depressed uh, LVEF uh, such as a true or pseudo-severe low flow low gradient stenosis, uh, or one must ask, ask himself or, or herself, uh, is the index stroke volume less than 35 milliliters uh, per meter squared, such, an, such as in a paradoxical low flow low gradient. Uh, but in that situation, one must also uh, take into account the possibility of error. So if one underestimates uh, the LVOT diameter, uh, as we said, it's, it is the greatest source of error. It may, uh, it may induce uh, uh, a relative uh, severe uh, aortic stenosis without necessarily having high gradient. Or if uh, one does not uh, do a parallel intercept of the aortic stenosis jet uh, with the CW Doppler, that may be also a source of error. So in those cases, as we discussed, we must uh, 
try to find alternative views in order to intercept the uh, aortic stenosis just, uh, just at a more parallel angle. Uh, and you must also take account of the physiological uh, state of the patient during the examination, uh, a severe uh, hypertension during the measurement of the transvalvular gradient uh, may, for example, uh, uh, underestimate uh, the uh, severity of uh, aortic stenosis. Uh, there are some limitations to the left ventricular outflow tract measurements that one must know. Uh, there are, there may be some uh, heavily calcified uh, uh, valves and uh, partly annulus, so that may uh, lead, lead to the underestimation of the LVOT diameter measurements. Uh, uh, different uh, probe angulation may solve the, the problem. Uh, you can see in the right image uh, that uh, it, it is the same outflow track. If you just angulate the, um, the outflow track in a, a different manner, then you can see that uh, the uh, outflow track becomes uh, of a greater dimension than, uh, than initially anticipated. Uh, also, the uh, LVOT measurement and the calculation of the, uh, the uh, CSA, so the area under um, the, uh, with the VTI under the, uh, uh, in the LVOT, uh, is based on an assumption that uh, um, the outflow track is circular, but in fact, it is more of an elliptical shape. So there can be, uh, there can be uh, errors and measurements that, uh, that are caused by this uh, uh, anatomical uh, consideration. Uh, and the inter observer variability is 5 to 8% when measuring uh, LVOT. Uh, so uh, that must also be taken into account. And when reviewing uh, follow up of uh, aortic stenosis, uh, one may go back to the uh, past exam to know. How, uh, how the LVOT has been measured uh, as the person before measured uh, a lower LVOT, for example, than what you would think of while evaluating your, your exam. So that may all be strategies to, uh, to cope with that uh, uh, error, uh, the measurement error. Uh, so applying the pretest probability uh, using the Bayes theorem, you can use the, the Bayes theorem and the pretest probability in many situations uh, in the uh, ECHO lab. For example, if we take the artifact that we've shown uh, uh, at the uh, in early in the presentation, uh, if you're if you're um, if you encounter such uh, mass in the left uh, atrium and you're not quite sure if it is a, it is an artifact, it's not evident. Well, would you say the probability of artifact uh, with without knowing it is an artifact first uh, in a 70 year old patient that has had palpitation and stroke uh, would be maybe higher than a asymptomatic young patient. So that is an example uh, of the pretest probability. Also, if a patient has a suspected mass on his uh, aortic cusp or suspected vegetation, uh, it is more likely that uh, a patient that has fever with positive hemocultures and other clinical cl criteria would have a, a definite endocarditis than a patient who hasn't any of those uh, uh, symptoms and uh, risk factors. Uh, so. Uh, it, it is also important with the stress tests uh, because sometimes, you know, stress tests may not be uh, uh, the most easy to interpret because of patient movement, uh, because of uh, uh, poor endocardial, uh, uh, endocardial border definition, even with contrast in some patient. Uh, so if you're if you're not sure about a certain uh, hypokinetic area, well, you must also uh, inc incorporate the um, pretest probability using uh, the uh, probably the likelihood of uh, uh, of CAD in your patient. So uh, let's say a 80 year old diabetic patient with hypertension that you're not quite sure if he has a potential hypokinetic area uh, in uh, the, stre the stress echo. Uh, well, the likelihood of having um, a significant CAD is higher than a 25 year old uh, female, for example. So um, when you account for the pretest probability, it uh, increases uh, the uh, the accuracy and precision of uh, your measurement uh, when, is, when it is not clear cut. So how, how can we uh, improve uh, the accuracy and precision in the Ecolab using uh, simple uh, simple steps. Uh, well, we, we may use uh, local echo protocols in order to improve the inter-observer uh, reliability. Uh, 
reviewing guidelines may help into uh, uh, assessing specific measurements. Uh, sometimes uh, keeping in note uh, of a patient's uh, MRN and following up on the study that you made, for example, a stress echo uh, and a patient, uh, a positive the stress echo uh, that is referred to the cath lab, you can correlate with other uh, diagnostic modality in order to uh, improve the uh, accuracy and precision of the measurement. Uh, using the pretest probability as discussed, uh, the continuous education into, uh, uh, into the, the most precise and accurate echo measurement, uh, feedbacks and interaction with colleagues and trainees. Uh, so we get a lot of improvement by, by trial and error, if you would say. So um, that is why we have uh, safety nets and uh, we, when we are when we're trainees. Uh, so getting feedback and asking for feedback is also uh, an important uh, uh, continuous uh, improvement method. Uh, and having a minimal caseload uh, per period of time to maintain proficiency, as we discussed, the experience of the interpreter uh, is uh, is linked to the uh, uh, to the uh, accuracy and preciseness of the measurements. So the take-home message, uh, messages uh, is that common types of error are related to the following methods of measurements, uh, the person doing the measurements, the physical, physiological parameter of uh, uh, the comorbid disease, and uh, mathem mathematical and anatomical assumption. Uh, many ultrasound physics concepts may cause artifact and effect measurement, knowing them is essential. Uh, sources of error in quantitative measurement of cardiac pathology may be compounded, and the weight of each source of error is not the same. Uh, geometrical and mathematical assumption may be false depending on the pathology st studied uh, and lead to measurement errors. Uh, and many strategies exist to decrease the sources of error in the echo lab. Uh, with that said, I will thank everybody to, uh, uh, for, to have attended my presentation and I will take questions if there are any. Thank you.